All right, as you guys know, Akai tries to stay ahead of the curve and they delivered again. They just given us a new saw clipper that not only works in your computer, but they have it in standalone mode as well. And now that I think about it, they got this in standalone mode before the steel. Before we get started, if you guys need any equipment for your studio, make sure you guys go ahead and click my link in the description and head over to Zounds.com. Zounds has a whole bunch of stuff on the site and they have a whole bunch of stuff on the site that requires no credit or background check. Meaning all you have to do is order it, they'll ship it to you and you can make monthly payments. All you have to do is add a credit or debit card up to the account and you can go ahead and get your stuff just like that. So if you guys need some equipment, make sure you guys go ahead and click my link in the description and head over to zounds.com and get you some equipment today. Oh man, my guys over at Analog Cases just released the new travel case for the MPC Key 37. Man, this thing fits the MPC 37 like a glove. And this thing comes heavily padded to make sure that your MPC Key 37 stays safe at all times. It also comes with some extra compartments to store your cables and everything else. And while you're traveling, you can either carry it like a briefcase or if you really want to get jiggy with it, this thing turns into a backpack as well. So if you guys want to go ahead and pick up this bag, make sure you guys go ahead and click my link in the description and head over to Analog Cases and search for the MPC Key 37 case and you guys can save 10% on it today. So go ahead and click that link right now. All right, so Akai's just giving us a new saw clipper. It not only works on your MPC software, but it'll work on other programs as well. But I'm mostly excited because now they have it in standalone mode. And it actually came out on standalone mode before some other things came out on standalone mode. Now, I'm very excited about using the saw clipper because, of course, as you guys know, all the FL Studio people rave about their soft clipper and how good it is. And now all of us MPC people have a soft clipper to claim as well. Now, some of you guys are like, Bolo, why do you need a soft clipper? Because I really don't like using limiters on my track because they kind of squash my drums a little bit. A lot of you guys talk about these limiters all the time about how they squash your drums and stuff like that. And yeah, it happens. So a lot of times I just didn't even use any limiters when I would make beats. I would just let them things peek out and it is what it is. It's worked over the years, so I ain't think I need to change. But in all due respect for most of the studios out here, I would try to have my stuff at least you know, finalized through some type of a limiter. But then I started seeing more producers just use clippers to combat against things peaking. I definitely got on that train very quickly. So now a lot of times when I'm actually bouncing down my tracks, I'll rather use a clipper at the end of my chain than I would a limiter. So now with this being in standalone mode, I can just go ahead and use the clipper in here and get down to business. And that way I can still retain the quality of my drums and my sounds without things being squashed too much. Now I know everybody's not gonna like this, but I like it. It does well for me. So let's go ahead and check out the new Air Soft Clipper right now. All right, so I'm in my MPC Key 37 right now and I am very excited to know that we now have a Soft Clipper that can be used in standalone mode. So I have this beat right here that I actually made on my IG Live. Let's go ahead and check it out right now. Came out pretty cool and it took me like, you know, 15 minutes to do it. And I used all the internal uh, melody sounds from the instruments inside of the MPC Key 37. And I used my drum kits for the actual, you know, the drum. So if you guys need some drum kits, make sure you guys go and holler at your boy 
Link is in the description for Bolo's drum kits. You know what I'm saying? They're all dope. Now, let's go ahead and check out the new Soft Clipper. All right, so as you guys can see, I have all of my sounds right here, which I use nine total sounds. And then now what I did was I actually routed everything over to my sub mixes, which I have my melody tracks on sub mix one and my drums on sub mix two. The reason why is sometimes I like to add all the effects just on my sub mixes rather than adding them all to my individual sounds. And that way you kind of save on processing inside of the unit as well. But let's go ahead and go over to the main outputs. Now, um, what I'm gonna do first is I'm actually going to move this over to our hook part because that's the loudest part of the beat. And that's what we're gonna work on right now. And then that way we can go ahead and put this effect over that hook part and it will take care of the rest of the beat. So let's go back into the mix and let's go ahead and open up the soft clipper. So gonna go out of that, let's go to harmonic and then we're gonna go right here to soft clipper and then we hit the pencil tool and then there it is. And as you guys can see, <laughs> the first preset is called Feels Fruity. So you, you obviously know where they got that from. So, you know, all the FL Studio users out there, yeah, we. We got a standalone clipper now. This is pretty much it. Very easy. As you guys can see, it has a drive. It has a shape tool right here. Post level, output level, a release, a mix, a true peak, anti-alias, and they have a stereo link for all of that stuff. I don't pretty much use none of that stuff. What I really worry about is the drive and the shape because depending on how you drive it, and the shape that you're using is how it's going to sound. So let's go ahead and mess with that right now. So let's just go ahead and mess with the actual shape. So let's go ahead and play it and we're gonna go through the three shapes and you will hear a difference in each one. Depending on the shape you have on here, right here with the ton, ton, I try to look it up, I can't remember how to say it. But as you guys can see, it had a particular shape and uh, it actually sounded really good, really clean, really open. The sign was much lower. Um, I typically, when I've been using, I have not used the sign shape. And then you have the, par uh, the parabolic, which actually sounds really loud. But a lot of times when I'm using this shape, I would turn down the drive to kind of get it to kind of clean up a little bit. But a lot of times I just keep it right here on the ton, ton shape. Okay, just sounds good to me. And I don't mess with anything else. I don't mess with anything else, I'm fine. Now, if you guys are not too familiar with messing with stuff like this, they do have a bunch of presets and they have a whole bunch of presets in here that you guys can use. They have the glue effect. They have all of this stuff in here for you guys to use. I just use Feels Fruity and I usually just mess with the drive. So right now, let's play this thing back. So when I play it, I'm gonna mess with just the drive only. So as you guys can see, it sounds really good. And this is nowhere near to zero, okay? Right now, we are hitting a peak level going out of here. Yeah, the highest we got is like negative nine dB. That's the highest we got. And then right now, if we go ahead and turn this on and off, it'll show you how much we are gaining in here. And we're just really just adding in to, you know, the drive and it's giving us the sound that we need. So we can turn this off and let's play it back. All right, let's turn it on. All right, 
so that's cool. So a lot of you guys who are not Clipper people will probably say, ah, I don't like Clippers because they shave off the peaks of the transits and all that stuff like that. I don't like Clippers. It's just, it sounds too distorted and all that stuff. I feel you, but at least my track going to be hitting and it's not going to be peaking. So that's the good thing. But for you guys who don't like Clippers, let's go ahead and add a limiter. So let's go ahead and turn that off. Let's add the limiter in here. So let's go back to dynamics and then let's go to air music. And then we're going to add the air limiter right here, which is very good. But for me to try to retain my drums mostly, I try to use a clipper, especially when I'm trying to retain that and not peak. So <laughs> let's go ahead and go right here to the limiter and let's play this thing back now. And then while we're in here, we might as well just go ahead and add, you know, the effect in here so we can kind of get it up to volume and everything. Gain this up. Turn that look ahead time up a little bit. Turn this release down. Fast release. All right, sounds pretty cool. I'm on my headphones. I like to do things on my speakers, but I'm on my headphones. Sound pretty good in here. Now that I turn this up, I think I got around about a negative three dB gain reduction. Sounds good, but as you can hear, that snare and that and that bass drum is just not hitting like how it was hitting before. I'm losing a little bit. It's not much, but I'm losing a little bit and I don't like that. But it still sounds good. Also, as you can see, it is actually hitting at negative one dB at the loudest volume, which is good because now we don't have anything peeking over. It still sounds good, but we had to really kind of gain this thing up. So now this one is actually at negative one dB. The clipper is at negative nine dB. But let's see how the volume sounds between each one. So let's go right here and let's play the limiter first. I'm gonna switch back and forth between the limiter and, cl uh, between the, limiter and the clipper and let's see how they sound. don't really hear that much of a difference so far as volume wise, but with the clipper, you do hear a little bit more of the drums hitting a lot better. Not, not a lot, lot, but it is better, at least to me. I don't know about to y'all, y'all let me know if I'm tripping, but to me, it does sound better and it's nowhere near to the volume that it could be because we can actually push that a little bit more. So I can actually go in here and I can actually push this volume up a little bit more if I want to, but what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to hit more of the drive. So yeah, let's go ahead and drive this up real quick. Let's drive this up to about, let's just do a drive at 100%. Yeah, how about 100% drive, I think we'll be fine. So let's go ahead and play this back now. See the difference between the two? Yeah. And even though that we drove this up to a hundred percent we are still only hitting at like negative seven dB and it is louder than the actual limiter that's set at 0 0.01 dB. This thing is dope, man. This thing is dope. Now, even though this thing is dope, I'm actually gonna show you guys a way that a lot of people actually use a saw clipper and a limiter together. So we have this right here. We have this drive set at 100%. And what I'm going to do now is I'm actually gonna turn on the limiter and I'm actually gonna take this gain and I'm gonna bring this down to uh, actual zero. Let's put this at zero and put it at zero dB. We're gonna leave everything the same. And then now that we have those peaks shaved off, 
we can actually drive the limiter a little bit more. And in that way, it will retain some of that original sound. It's going to kind of glue it in together a little bit more. But um, you can actually get more volume that way as well. So let's go ahead and do that. So that's how it sounds now. And then now we still kind of retain a little bit more of those drums now with everything else. And it's kind of uh, glued together a little bit more. So it has that sound. And I'm pretty sure if you go ahead and mess around uh, with the look ahead time to release and even with the drive and maybe the shape, you can probably get that really good, crispy, good hitting hard hitting sound that you would really want between the two of them but i know a lot of people like to use soft clippers before limiters to kind of give it that added extra punch before going into the limiter or you know a lot of times we just use the soft clippers by themselves because they just retain that and yes if you push stuff a little too hard yes you will mess it up but if you kind of use this stuff moderately and just add what you need you won't mess it up now this stuff does add a little bit of distortion to it but i like it it's worked for me over the years it's going to continue to work because this is the way i like to do it now if you're not into that you can actually just go ahead and just use the soft clipper for what it is and then you can drive it into a limiter or you know you can use other things as well but if you use this tool on here you definitely will not be disappointed because as you guys can see this thing is very powerful and it does what it's supposed to do i'm a happy camper and i think you guys will be happy with it too all right so there it is as you guys can see this thing is dope if you guys want to go ahead and pick it up there is a link in the description right there to go ahead and pick this up and if you guys do not have an mpc key 37 you might want to go ahead and pick this up as well it is a very dope machine so i hope you guys enjoyed this video hope you guys learned something from it and like i always say peace out